thank you for the introduction, Les. Um, as he said, I am the design superwoman and I fly in, fix problems and fly away until you need me again. Um, rather than spending any more time on who I am and what I do, I wanna to bring to you my 24 slides on brand building basics. So I'm gonna share my screen with you. Da -da -da. There's lots of shameless pictures of myself in here. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. So brand building basics. Today, I'm gonna to be covering what is a brand, what makes a consistent brand, what are touch points, and how to build consistency into your brand. Now, your brand is more than just your logo. Your brand can be your brand mark, plus the colors that you use, the fonts that you use, the tone of voice. So whether it's a more casual, laid back, fun loving kind of way of communicating with your customers or whether it's quite professional and clean cut. Your brand story. So where you came from and what makes you you, what makes you different and what makes you unique to your customers. Other things like icons, illustrations, the way that you have your style of photography, um, your ethos and morals, as well as your frequency of engagement. So how often you post on social media, what social medias you do and don't post on, these all make up your brand. So a collection of all of these is the, of these elements is the silent ambassador of your brand. So it makes it recognizable, familiar and trustworthy. So take a second, think about the people you choose to have in your social circles or the long-term staff that you choose to have help you run your business, right through to the take the, that regular takeaway pizza place or pasta place that you have that you order from consistently. You do these things and you choose to have these people around you because you recognize them. I would like to hope so, especially if they're family. They are familiar to you and you have, had, you have trust in them which has been built up over consistency over time. So you keep going back to that regular pizza place because they do the best pepperoni that you have ever had. And every time that you've tried something else, you've just been disappointed. So brand consistency is the glue that helps put you back into context. But realistically, why does context matter? Have you ever lost anything and retraced your steps to find it? Think keys, think um, that really good pen, you know, the one that actually works because all of the other ones don't for some damn reason. Or try to remember the words of a song by humming them. You're trying to get to the chorus, but you've got to get through the whole verse. Or you're trying to remember the key word in that that's going to re remind you so you can find it on Spotify. Or maybe you've been making word associations to remember someone's name. This happens because we tend to forget things when we're removing them from the original context. And it's, this is what we call context dependent memory. Now, I know you're sitting there thinking she's talked about brand and now we're going into like psychology. Bear with me, stick with me, we got this. The reason why you want to be sitting in context memory, you want, you, you want your brand to sit in that process of re-remembering, okay, I need to have a gardener come in and look after my garden. Well, I remember that there was that ad that has kind of implanted itself in my memory because it's in a contextual sense. So if you want to become recognized and remembered in order to earn your customers trust, you must show up in a way that's consistent so you can be put back into context. This can be achieved by creating consistency in your brand. So this is going back to the, at the very start saying about all of your brand colors. So consistent in your brand colors, consistent in the tone of voice, consistent in the way you show up. They say consistency is key and that the key will unlock the links between your brand and the needs of your customers. By placing your brand consistently in situations where your brand is relevant. So say for instance, you, uh, let's go back to the landscaping idea. So if you have a landscaping business, you'd want to be putting really beautiful visuals of gardens that you've done either up on Instagram or even on Pinterest so that they are in a situation where your ideal customer is going to be taking that information and storing it in a contextually based pattern. 
It takes time and repetition for customers to go from being aware that you exist to remembering, trusting and considering you and eventually hopefully becoming a fan, which means that they're going to come back not only themselves, but shout your name from the rooftops to other people because they go, oh, I know someone who does gardening. Here, here's their Instagram. So this is where touch points come in. Now a touch point is a fancy schmancy way of saying any way a potential customer can interact with you and your business. So think about the different ways. Now we live in a age where it's a lot more uh, easy, but a lot more saturated with the amount of touch point groups that are available to us. So any and all of the social media platforms across all the different platforms, uh, you've got your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. For more creative businesses, there'd be things like Dribble. Um, for, and there's little niche ones for each kind of group. Um, there may be even a Reddit thread that's really uh, relevant. And that can still be a touch point. Um, I've actually seen businesses become really popular because they either have a, a subreddit thread that is power washing um, and people get lost in that and then remember their business because they've gotten lost in that video. Um, and I also know that uh, a lot of businesses have had a lot of recent success from social media platform TikTok because they've got the right target of who is going to be watching their stuff and it ends up coming back through their business. Now, it's not all just social media. There is plenty of tried and tested touch points. So digital advertising, print advertising, direct marketing. And I'm not talking about those horrible catalogs that like feel really weird in your hands and you have to wash your hands like five times before you get the, the grossness off. Um, your website, both uh, commerce, blog, anything that ends up um, on your website, post sale interactions. So those fun emails that um, come through that say, hey, you bought from us. We'd love to hear from you what you thought, or it could even be just a little handwritten note that's sent to someone afterwards saying hey let us know how you feel things like mailing lists so when someone jumps on your website and wants to buy something or download something that you're offering taking their um their email and communicating with them in a mailing list or a subscription-based service then what is something has not been happening very much in 2020 but in-person interactions so that's still a touch point a touch point would be having an interaction with someone about their brand because I know as well as many do, as soon as you start talking to someone about their brand, they light up, they buzz, they're really excited about talking about what they want to talk about because they're passionate enough to dedicate basically their life to it. Things that come a little bit later would be things like product reviews because your product or your service is out there and you're asking people to come back. And the best way to sell something is to have someone sell it for you peer referrals, affiliates and influencers, things like that, and then events and activations. They're all things that come a little bit further down the line and aren't for everyone, but it's really good to get a bit of a, uh, a mixed bag of different things because not all your customers are going to be seen, sitting on social media and seeing your ad every single time. Now, an average sale requires seven to 10 touches with a brand before a potential buyer converts to a customer. So that's seven different times that they you need to get inside their head and each one of them has to be different in what it's, um, that needs to be saying the same thing, but different in the way it's done. Because if it's the same, people get bored. They switch off, they click away, they scroll away, they swipe away. They're not interested. If you have the same ad or the same message, they're going to be kind of going, oh no, I've already seen that, tick it off my list. Don't need to worry about that. So you need to say, I'm still here, I still exist, but here's something that you didn't know, or here's something that I can add to your business, or here's something that we did for someone else. The main part of that is keeping all of those messages consistent in visual so that you can be building up that trust and that recognition with the customer and your brand. So think about these as building blocks to make a tall tower. Let's all get out our Lego and start building a tower. At the base, you've got the big piece, which is your brand. This is everything that your brand is, your logo, colors, fonts, all of it. This is the base of your brand that sets it up for success. Each one of these building blocks is stacked and layered, reinforcing your brand and building trust with your brand. So 
you're providing the customers and you're pr proving your worth. So there may be reviews, emails, um, when someone has said, hey, why don't you go and check out this person? Why don't you go and check out that person? Peer reviews, uh, things like your website, photography, all of these things add up to this tall tower that is your business. If you have one of those things inconsistent, say you used a completely different style of photography, different color set, or even in this example, that your website looks different to everything else, rather than your customer going, oh, look how tall that tower is. They're going to go, why is that one yellow? Why is that one different? And then I'm going to notice the thing that's wrong rather than noticing all your hard work. When you have enough touch points in your tower and your brand will tower over everyone else, but it will also stand out because it's consistent. It's consistent in its message, its colors, its fonts, its brand. And you've got more trust in that consistency. We as humans like to create a consistency and have trust and stability. Even though sometimes we do jump out of planes and all that sort of stuff, we like to have consistency in where we put our money, where we put our time, where we put our energy. So now that you know all about branding and touch points, how do you maintain a consistent brand? With your own set of branding guidelines. Now I'm going to ask Put your hand up if you have a set of brand guidelines for your business. Nice. So some of you. Now, what the, the importance of having a set of brand guidelines is so that you have a kind of a reference system, but I'll touch on that in a minute. So in a set of branding guidelines, it's not a one size fits all. It's not a one set and forget. It's a quite organic pro process and document that will grow with your business because your business may need one certain logo at, at one point, but then when you get a website or when you advertise in a, um, in a magazine that only has one color printing or you're wanting to get it engraved on something, you're gonna have to have different alterations and different versions of your logo different alterations and versions of the fonts that you use, um, especially when it comes to web-based fonts, but your brand colors and your brand palettes will stay the same. Now, the other things, so those are the three core really things, how to use the logo and how not to use it, the brand colors and palettes that you would use and the brand fonts, they're your three core. So every time that you go to make something, you're like, yep, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Other things that might include a uh, tone of voice for copy. So all of your copywriting on how that kind of works in that way. Photography style, um, the icons and elements that are used throughout your brand to represent different elements of your brand. Um, the stationery that's used, uh, the social templates that are used, all of these things will be outlined in your brand guidelines. So this is your reference system. When you go to create a new ad or a new build for something for your brand, you will immediately know what fonts, colors, and imagery to use. Your brand guideline shows you how to create these and create the best representative of your brand that's most likely to contain a consistent brand visual. So it means that you've got this reference system that you can come back to and go, I know that every single time we always have a banner, which is this color, and we always use this font you were then building that consistency and building that rep reputation for your brand to be consistent, to be dependable and trustworthy. Now, Jasmine, mm -hmm. I, I, this, this stuff fascinates me and I could, I could listen to this forever, but we've probably got another two minutes. Excellent. So. Well, I have another two slides. Woohoo! So this will be your brand Bible. So when you send your logo, to others and they build assets for your brand, you've got the trust in saying that, you know, this is this is my baby and this is how to treat it. And when they don't treat it right, they can you can come back and say, actually, look here, this is what the clear reference is to get it back on track. It's never too late to develop a brand identity guidelines. In fact, recognizing them and that you need them means it's the perfect time to have them created. So after today's session, you'll be sent a DIY mini brand cheat sheet template to fill in. Uh, it's set out with what your logo is, what alternate logos you have, fonts, colors, kind of a one pager cheat sheet. And if you wanna go even further than that, you can either do a little bit of a DIY search or give me a call. I'd love to build a brand guideline for you.